<laughs> hey everybody, it's Matthew, also known as Mr. Domestic, here to share with you a video on English paper piecing. This video is going to focus on sewing curves using an applique stitch. So I picked this one project that had a bajillion different clamshells because this is the one shape where you must, must, must use the applique stitch. So I spent a lot of time with these itty bitty clamshells perfecting my technique for the applique stitch and now I'm here to share it with you. So if you're here for some fun, first thing, look down, go ahead, look down, subscribe, and now let's get ready to have some fun. <laughs> So this video will focus on sewing curves in English paper piecing, specifically with this shape, the clam shell. Because of the fine point here, it's impossible in my opinion to English paper piece this with any other stitch other than the applique stitch. So that's gonna be the stitch that I use in this video. But first, I'm going to show you how to baste this shape appropriately to prepare it for the applique stitch in the second part. So with the clam shell, what you'll need here, you'll need your glue, glue basting. Once again, I can't see doing curves without glue basting it. You'll need a rotary cutter. You'll need a fabric. And here I have a five inch clamshell from Paper Pieces. So to cut this out, since it's a larger shape, generally when doing English paper piecing, I prefer a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch seam allowance, but I'm gonna do this a little bit larger so that you can see it. I'm sure it's gonna end up a little bit wonky. And then here, and then here. And this is what you would need. So I can put this away, I closed it, and you're only going to base the top, this part. So I will put a little dab of glue here, and a little dab of glue here. And then I'm not gonna be stingy with my glue, because with curves, I wanna make sure that it's set. So I'm gonna put some there, leaving a little gap just just to stay in the habit of that. And then I'll start in the center, if you see it, and I'll fold it over. And then you're just gonna gradually fold over a little bit at a time. If you go too fast and have too much fabric in there, then it won't look curved. It'll look kind of janky on the other side when you do it. So make sure to do it gradually. And since that's super flat, I'm gonna pull that, and then I'll go this side. And hopefully when I flip it over, you'll see that I got the curve, the biasness in the curve allows it to, to bend and fold over it really easily. So let me make sure I got that down, I'll flip it over and look at that. See, it's a nice, nice even curve and that's how you would base it. I'll let you see the, the end. One other thing that you could do is you could heat set it with an iron just to make sure that it stays in place. A lot of times I'll do that, but I put a lot of glue on there. So I think we're ready for the applique stitch and I'll show you that next. So now in the video, I'm going to show you the applique stitch. But before I can do that, I needed to show you the preparation for the clamshell shape if you're going to, to sew multiples onto multiples. So in this example, I'm gonna have two on the top and then you're going to sew two on the bottom. So I brought the camera out so you can see the setup and that'll bring it closer again for the actual applique stitch. So what you'll need, I have four basted clamshells. I have two non-basted clamshells and I'll show you how I use them once I get into it. I have four pins and some foam board to affix the top row of the clamshells onto. You could also glue it onto fabric if you chose to do that. But for me, um, since it's just a, a demo, I see no need to do that. And if you have an applique glue, then use that. I like to use whatever I have on hand. I prefer not to spend more money if I don't need to. So I'm just using Fabric Fuse. I had it for another project. And I'll put this aside for now. And I'll put all of this aside other than two just to show you some preparation. So if you're doing a whole row, like let's say you're doing more than two, you're doing like 10 or 10 and 10, you're going to stitch them together in a chain right on the point. So you're gonna find where the edge, the flap is, where the fabric can be folded over the piece of paper there and also here. And then you'll put these two edges together right here just so you know where that edge is and then i've got my milliner needle and some 
orifil thread white just so you can see the contrast thread as I do in all my videos and then I get right underneath the paper the lip of the paper and I'm gonna tie a, a double knot just to secure it in place right here and if you had multiples you would do that along the entire chain but I'm, for this demo I'm just doing two and this one look voila it's already done and I'll take my foam board again just to show you how to prepare it the top row. So you need some kind of straight edge and I'm going to use a straight edge of this foam board and this is where the non-basted shapes come in handy. So I'm going to find that little stitch right here to put this on top of it and I'll do the same with this and you only need two if it's a longer row. Just because if I didn't, since it's round, it's hard to really visualize where the down is for the point unless you can see it. And this shows me to adjust it a little bit. You can still estimate, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but it allowed me to, to estimate it. If I didn't have these on there, I wouldn't know. And so now I can remove one and I'll use the pins to affix it onto the foam board. And I'll do the same with this one. And if you were doing it onto fabric, if you had a fabric on the top, then you would like put a dot of glue underneath it. And so this is there, it's not moving. And now for the second row, you're not gonna use pens, use some glue. And this, it's gonna be the same thing. So I use these throughout the whole time. It's a trick that I learned on my last project. To put these on, and then the top corner will go right over that just so you can see it. See where the due south is of this point. I'll take these off and use the fabric glue, just a little dab right here and right here and then maybe right here. And this will keep it in place and then you would need to let it dry for a second and then you can do the same thing with this so ta -da! that's how you're going to prepare it and now I'm going to bring the camera closer so you can see the actual applique stitch as I stitch here and here yay Okay, now that I've shown you the preparation, I'm going to show you the actual applique stitch. So I brought the camera really close so you'll be able to see the stitch. And now the glue has set, thanks to the magic of TV, so I can pull the pins out and it's secure. It's good to go. It's not, it's not going anywhere. It's pliable and you can move it. So I start on this side. It's just a preference. I don't know if it matters. And what I'll do, since I'm on this, I'm going to go right here to almost the edge of where I'm gonna start stitching and joining it, and I'm gonna tie a double knot. I prefer to secure my thread that way to tying a knot in the end and then letting that be the anchor because, let me do it again, because I don't know if it's because I'm like so muscly and like like so massive and so strong, <laughs> but <laughs> whenever I, I do it that way where I, I create the anchor, it, um, comes through, I pull it, and then I mess it all up and I have to start over. So I found that, that just anchoring it with this double knot, that does the job for me, and it seems more secure than the other way. So now we're gonna stitch along this curve. And I'm gonna come up the back. I'll show you how I'm gonna come up the back here. Of the front one. I'm gonna come up the back because the, see how it's right here on the end? That's where the, the needle is always gonna come up in the stitch. It's always gonna come up right on that crisp edge. So I'm gonna pull it up the back and that's where, got a little caught up here, it's gonna start. And I'm going to keep this entire video in real time unless I start taking a long time just so that you can really see the stitch. Let me make sure, make sure I get it right here. 
And then where this point is, this one right here, you're gonna go to the back one, like right underneath where the lip is, get it in there, and then bring it back through to that point. Let me see if you can see, I'll bring it up really close. Let me see if I can handle this. Do you see what's going on there? That's what you're gonna do. Let me bring it back down and complete the stitch. And it'll go through. And then where this came out, maybe, sorry, I got a little fuzzy. Where this came out here, you're gonna go right behind there and do the same thing. And I'm gonna bring this up close again so you can see it. Do you see that right there? It's like magic. Let me bring it back down again. And then you pull it through. And you can't even see it, see? Like, I know I'm coming back and forth and back and forth, but I really want you to see this. See that? You can't see the stitch. This is a contrast stitch or thread. You can't see it because you're going behind and then through that point, behind and then through that point. Now I'm just gonna stitch so you can see it. Hopefully get the rhythm. So this came out here. And I'm gonna go right behind it into the back one and then back through and catch the lip. I kind of messed that one up. And catch the lip. And then go right behind, come back through, and catch that lip. So sometimes I catch a millimeter, sometimes I catch a couple millimeters, just depending on whether I'm in a flow or really focusing. I seem, whenever it's like an unconscious thing, I seem to, to do a lot better when I'm focused than and catch just a little bit, even still, it's like you can't even see it right here. And then you're gonna just go along the line. There you go. Go a little caught up. And hopefully y'all are seeing this. And then catch that lip. So, so you're going right on the edge to where and you go behind right where that point was. And then catch that lip. And I am gonna fast forward it just to get to this one point so you can see it right now. And here I am right to this little stitch that I made earlier. I'll show you what I do there. And for this demo, I'm making the stitches a lot longer than I would in real life, just so that you can see it. That's why I chose these big shapes to exaggerate everything. You can see the actual shape. So I came up right here, right at the stitch. And then I'm gonna go to the other side and go back through. Then I'll flip it through the back. And then I'll go back through again and flip it to the front. And this is just to, to set this point so it doesn't wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And it stays in place. And then now I'm gonna go back up the other curve with here with the same stitch. And I'll go slow at first and then speed it up just so that you can see the stitch again if you're not getting it. So here I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start underneath. I'm gonna catch that lip, find that first lip. There it is. There you go, it's like doing surgery. It's like doing surgery. Then go behind here, this one. Like behind the top, so you're gonna sew into the behind. Then you're gonna come back forward you're gonna catch that lip right here. Go back again. And 
bring it back forward. You catch that lip. Let's all say it together. Catch that lip. Catch that lip. Yes, yes, let's catch that lip. Catch that lip. Woohoo! Catch that lip. Do you see how it see that? So this is a really exaggerated stitch. I'm gonna bring this forward so you can really see it. See how it went behind and it's going through right on the lip. That's exaggerated. I would not do a 10 millimeter stitch, but this is just for the demo for you to see how it goes behind and comes out that lip. All right. I can see this. I'm gonna speed this up and get to the end just so you can see. Remember everybody, catch that lip, yes, yes. Catch that lip, yes, yes. Catch that lip. Okay, speed it up now. <laughs> okay, I was hoping this would happen where I wouldn't be able to finish all of this with one thread. So I'm gonna show you what happens, what I do, and this is how I secure it whenever this happens and I run out of thread, I'll just bring this to the back right here. I don't need this anymore. And then it's kind of like what I did in the, the beginning that I want to secure with a double knot right here in the back where you're not going to be able to see it. Let me bring this up. Right here. And then these are the the two threads from the original thread. And then I'll use all these threads. There's an extra thread there from the, the knot. And then I'll double knot using all of these threads to secure everything with this. Now everything is double knotted in place. It's a lot of thread. And then now I can go here and bring this through here. And then I am going to catch that up some more. One more long, super duper long stitch right here. And then I'm just gonna bring it back through the back. Then I'm gonna do a little knot right here. Now it's secure and it's done. <laughs> Yay! You got the applique stitch down. So in this video, you learned how to baste you learned how to prepare the clam shells, and you also learned how to do the applique stitch. So, if you had some fun, got a couple laughs, learned some tips, hey, if you're still here, then make sure to give me the thumbs up. <laughs> Keep it positive, y'all. Mr. Domestic out. <laughs>